I want to do something splendid, something heroic, something wonderful that won't be forgotten after I'm dead. I think I shall write stories. A strong decision taken by the author Louisa May Olcott when she was 50. Yes, at that age she started writing stories and when she was 16 her stories were published in a newspaper. That was her first step to success. Having been born to a poor family, she struggled a lot in her childhood days. Her dream was just to support her family and to be independent. Her dreams were to be independent and to support her family in the bad times. And her choice of writing stories helped her a lot in supporting her family. A surprise! A story extracted from a novel, Little Women. Louisa May Olcott was an American novelist and a poet. She has written a number of poems and novels. Most of her novels and poems were under the pen name Flora Fafield and A.M. Barnard. Mostly she had used her pen names Flora Fafield and A.M. Barnard instead of her name Louisa May Olcott. And this particular novel Little Women is a semi-autobiography. An autobiography tells the story about the author that was written by that author itself. In semi-autobiography, the author has written about her life with the help of other characters instead of her name. She hasn't used her name in this story. She has used a character to tell about her story. In this part of the class, we are going to know how Louisa May Olcott has published her first story and how her family got amazed when they saw her story in the newspaper. Let us see how her first story was published. Let us discuss the characters in this story. Actually in the novel Little Women, there are a lot of characters in that novel. But in this story, we have a limited number of characters. Let me tell you the characters in this story. Meg Motch. Meg Motch is the eldest sister. She is the eldest one. And then Joe Motch. Josephine Motch. And she plays the role of the author. Louisa May Olcott. And she is the second one. A tomboy's girl. And the third one. Beth Motch. Elizabeth Motch. Shortly known as Beth Motch. And she was the third one. And the final one is Amy Motch. The youngest of the four sisters. And Mrs. Motch, the mother of four sisters. The mother of March sisters. Meg Motch, Joe Motch, Beth Motch and Amy Motch. And then Hannah. Hannah was their housemaid. The last character in the story is Lori. Lori, a friend of March sisters. He is a friend. These are the characters in our story. The first scene in our story is set in the attic. In the attic, there was a sofa and on that sofa, Josephine Moss was lying down and writing her story. She was writing a story. And upon her head was a beam and on that beam, her pet. She had a pet rat named Scrabble. Her pet rat was going for a walk with his oldest son. This was the scene and she was writing her stories on the sofa. When she has completed the story, she wrote her name below it and threw down the pen. And she started reading the manuscript very carefully for mistakes. She started reading it and she started making some dashes here and there and some exclamation points here and there. And when she had completed, she tied those papers with a small thread ribbon. She has completed the story. And then she has picked up one more manuscript from her desk. So there are two manuscripts, two stories. She was looking at both of the manuscripts with a wistful expression. She has finally completed two stories and now she was about to submit her stories to the newspaper man in the newspaper office. She was not ready to tell these things to her sisters or to the mother. 
because if it was not published that would be a shame to her she felt that so she did not reveal this secret to her family so she has gone downstairs as quiet as possible and she picked up her hat and put on her jacket and she was not ready to go in the front door so she came out of the window window upon the roof she came out of the window and from there she jumped to the grassy bank because she never wanted to tell the secret to her family because they would feel ashamed when her stories were not published she stood up from the grassy bank and made her way to the road and on the road she saw an omnibus she hailed it she stopped the omnibus and got into it and reached a certain street she got down from her bus and looking for a building at a certain busy street she was walking quickly and looking for that building and finally she has found out that building that was nothing but the newspaper office she was in front of the newspaper office it was a big apartment and she was in front of it and she was looking at the stars the stars looked so dirty she was afraid she stood stock still she did move she was frozen she was looking at the dirty stairs and she was afraid that was the first time for her to enter a newspaper office to submit the stories she was totally scared you know what she did at that time she went in the building and went out she went inside the building and went out she did the same maneuver for many times and this was noted by a person who was in the building opposite to her and at some point she mustered up her courage and started walking upstairs the gentleman who was watching her closely took the hat and came out of the doorway and came near to her he came very closely to her and mocked her with some words he said it's like her to come alone but if she has a bad time she needs someone to help her home he mocked josephine mod and went away jo she went upstairs and went inside the room of the newspaper office and she submitted her stories she submitted two stories two manuscripts to the newspaper man and in 10 minutes she just came out of the stairs and started looking for that gentleman who had mocked her in that busy street she found him and at a long distance she got to know that that was nothing but lorry her friend so she wanted not to have a normal formal conversation she walked past him with a nod they both engaged in a conversation did you have a bad time not very really. you got through quickly yes thank goodness you will not say anything about it at home will you not a word well i have submitted two stories to a newspaper man and he is about to give his response in a week Josephine Mott whispered it in Lori's ear. Lori was her confidant, a trustable person. And when he got to know that Lori was really happy, he took his hat and threw it in the air and catching it again and saying, "Hurrah for Miss Mott, the celebrated American author." He was really happy because he knew it that she was the best writer at that time and her stories would definitely be published in the newspaper. He was really confident in it but Jo was not sure so she asked Lori to stop it she doesn't want her family to know about it because they would get disappointed if her stories were not published in the newspaper but at that same time Lori knew about her really well and he said it won't fail your stories will be published surely your stories are workshops shakespeare He compared Joe's stories with the works of Shakespeare. He compared her stories to the Shakespeare's, and compared to the half the rubbish that is published every day. There are a lot of stories that are being published every day, and your stories are the works of Shakespeare. It would definitely be published. He was so confident. He was so happy in it. After hearing the praise from Lori, her eyes. Jo's eyes were sparkle she turned bright and you know it really well a friend's praise is always sweeter than a dozen newspaper pops even your name comes in the newspaper it's not a matter your friend's praise is the matter 
your friend's place is more than a dozen newspaper pops. She was really happy to know it from the friend, Lori. Joe reached her home and waited for the Macher stories published in the newspaper. What was the family's reaction? How did they celebrate this? What happened? Let us see that in the next part of the class. That's all for the today's video. Thank you for watching it. See you soon in the next video.